It's hard to believe if I were to travel just 70 years ago, this little guide could potentially save my life. I'm Kara St. Cyr, and this is Safe Haven, Louisiana's Green Book. Whenever I drive down Government Street near downtown Baton Rouge, I always wonder what all these abandoned stores used to be. I've lived my whole life here, and I never learned about the history of this neighborhood. Apparently, a lot of Black-owned businesses were in this area. There were beauty parlors, taverns, restaurants, theaters, and in every edition of the Green Book, there was the Ever Ready. Built in 1938, it was the first hotel for African Americans in Baton Rouge. I'm meeting Joan Forbes at her home. Her uncle owned the Ever Ready. Hey, how you doing? Okay, how are you? My name is Joan Forbes. Please come in. So I would go visit Everett's Cafe and Cab Sand when I was little. And I was a little three and five year old sitting on the bar. So I got to see everybody come in and leave. And they basically taught me the business. You know, I saw everything. The whole block was like Little Harlem. You could call it Little Harlem because it was all black. Everybody was friends. You couldn't go nowhere, and Baton Rouge was like a little country town. Everybody knew everybody. Trust me, they knew everybody. In the 1930s, Joan's family moved to Baton Rouge from St. Francisville, which was a KKK stronghold gripped by racial violence. They worked as butlers, maids, and gospel singers. And despite tremendous challenges, they eventually opened their own businesses, especially her Uncle Joseph. Everybody should know how the Henderson family cared about Baton Rouge and its community. And Uncle Joseph did so much to help others to become business owners. And he helped the community as a whole, finally giving people to stay. Sometimes he wouldn't even charge them if they could not afford it. He would just let them stay until they got back on their feet. Uncle Joseph always wanted to expand his businesses. Really was like a mini mall, if you think about it. You know, with the photography studio, they even had a little dress shop in there. And then you had the cab stand. And really, he had women cab drivers. Yep, there were women cab drivers. The Ever Ready was popular for black musicians playing around town and at clubs on the Chitlin circuit and everyone loved the food. And the kitchen smelled so good because everything was homemade. And um, when you would walk in the door, you just had that aroma of good food. You could get a plate of red beans and rice for 15 cents. Betty Davis and all of them, like when they would come to town, they really liked soul food. They would stop by and get some ribs and mustard greens and cornbread and stuff. They enjoyed that. If they didn't stop by, they would order their food, and Uncle Joseph and all of them would deliver it to the hotel where they were staying. Equal rights for African Americans were a double-edged sword for thriving businesses like the Ever Ready. What happened with that area? And with that Integration area? came in, and it cut into their businesses. And people became more outspoken. I mean, the whites couldn't believe basically, that blacks had that kind of money. And they resented it in a way. And they would rather see the buildings destroyed than to see them remain. And that's what happened. They're being torn down. It's like they were never here in the first place. Do you think that people in Baton Rouge know how influential really this family was in this city? No, they had no idea. The Ever Ready closed in 1965, and today only the building's foundation is left. Although the neighborhood is being revitalized, there's no sign of its black history. And Joan is hoping to change that. I've been telling them about it for years, that they need to put markers in everything where all these businesses were. Not only the Hendersons, but you had the Bernards, and you had several other families. So there's so much importance here in Baton Rouge that the black community own. Everybody needs to know about it. Everybody, I don't care what color you are, wherever you came from, rainbow colors, whatever, they need to know all this existed. 
ExxonMobil Baton Rouge is proud to support Safe Haven, Louisiana's Green Book. For more than 100 years, ExxonMobil has made a commitment to workforce diversity and the belief that reflecting on historic race relations is key to shaping a better future.